Die Hard was an interesting change uh, that was starting to happen with visual effects because, because Star Wars came out, made a lot of money, every studio, science fiction, you know, space science fiction hardware was big. Galactica, Buck Rogers for TV, and then, you know, Star Trek, and so it was all, it was all spaceships, and, and that was one of the first movies that wasn't a big spaceship movie. It was sort of realistic effects which was really nice because the, uh, I think this, the whole sci-fi genre was, was running a little thin at that point. So, so Boss Film got Die Hard and Mark was running the shop and I was a crew chief on it. It's actually the Fox Plaza on the 20th Century Fox lot. It's actually up sort of on a hill, but the building was just finished. I think it had just opened a few months before, but that was the Nakatomi Plaza. They used that for or the Nakatomi building. And so we built that in the at Boss and we set it up in the parking lot like we set everything up and it was 30 feet tall when Alan Fauché and I were sort of dealing with that you know and the and it was a two-sided model it was on, on built on big pipe scaffolding and uh, to protect it in the evening we'd have to get up crawl up on this it was kind of dangerous and we'd have visqueen which is just big plastic sheets that we would try to t tie and every and towards the evening because uh, boss is down by the ocean the winds would always come up and we'd be holding on to these 30 foot long pieces of plastic that were like a sail it's a wonder we didn't get pulled off and you know fall to our deaths but we would wrap it all up every night basically it's a it was a pipe grid truss work and then um, plexiglass panels that were uh, screwed to it and then to simulate the granite stone that's on the actual building in Century City. If I remember, Virgil Morano took a real high detailed image of one of the panels and they just printed multiple photos that we stuck down to this plexiglass miniature out in the parking lot. So every one of those little sections you know, is a photograph of, of the granite. That was a pretty cool miniature to work on. And uh, so we did a number of shots with, with that building and then we worked on the the large, larger scale top section that had the exploding helicopter. Yeah, the pyro, the, the larger pyro section where the helicopter gets destroyed and top of the building gets destroyed. That was a fun one to help on. And uh, I remember one night, since they had to shoot it at night right there in Marina del Rey, I was assigned to help Alan Fouché to, to babysit it. And, and uh, during one of the takes, uh, apparently Alan, I think this is not his first time, but Sure enough, a uh, piece of the plexiglass comes flying back, and he's the only one that it hit, <laughs> nailed him in the head, <laughs> survived. But uh, I remember as you're getting ready for the next take, you know, they'll go ahead and they'll hold the scene slate, run the camera to get an imprint, and then uh, me and Alan are looking back, and I'm, th I'm giving a thumbs up, and he's pointing to his head with a piece of plexi. In CGI land, they got to create everything they see, everything. And if you don't get the billion bits of light and shadow, your brain goes, you know, I, I don't buy this scene. I, I, I don't believe it. But of course, if you've got the diehard skyscraper from the first film, well, you believe that. Yeah, it's a 20-foot model we just blew up and turned and set on fire. But, well, I can believe that because the light, the shadow, it, it's all real. I'm not sure how Mark found Larry Jolly, but Larry Jolly was the helicopter guy, and so Larry built flying helicopters. And I remember um, he came out, and I didn't have any experience with him. He came out one day to fly one in the um, parking lot at Boss, fly one of these helicopters around. I remember. And so Larry's flying this helicopter, and he's taking it up. I go, we're all just completely amazed at his abilities. He's an incredible. Uh, um, pilot with us, these things. And so it's flying along and it just does something weird and it just takes off and goes right under, slams in underneath the, the trailer where all these jacks were and slams it, sort of blows up. But so Larry made, that, made our helicopters for, for that and we built this large scale, fifth scale, whatever, might have been eight floors, I don't remember exactly, of the top of the building. So when the helicopter is falling over, you know, here's the surface of the building and the helicopter falls over and blows up. Thane Morris was our, our pyro, he was our special effects guy and our pyro guy. That was a shoot where Thane Morris had to sort of go toe to toe on camera uh, for the news with the neighbors who were across the street in their condos. So here we are, we have pyrotechnics going off in the parking lot. 
100 yards away from condominiums. And sure enough, there were complaints. And Dane Morris, uh, you got to love him. Uh, he says, well, I, I got my permits. I'm allowed to do this. <laughs> so needless to say, there's some miffed uh, residents, but uh, they eventually got the shots off, as well know. <laughs> and he really knew his business when it came to, to pyro. And for some reason, I always ended up working with Thane on, on pyro stuff. Not, I, not that I was doing it, but any model stuff that needed to be done, I would end up helping him out. Very smart guy and a very nice guy. And I used to ask him, well, what is this Primacord? What is this stuff? You know, he would explain it to me. And he's a chemist or whatever. I don't know. He's, he's a, he can tell you down to the, uh, you know, the, the atomic structure of what's, you know, like this proton is looking for an electron type of thing. We had a lot of pyro effects in, in Die Hard. And we also did a force perspective elevator shaft. I think this was Mark's idea. I think I laid that out and built part of it. But uh, it, it starts out from the camera about five or six feet across. And within 12 feet, if you look at it from the side, it shrinks down to an opening about this big. And you're forcing the perspective from the camera. So when you look down, it looks like it's 30 feet, uh, 30, well, there are 30 floors of of elevator shaft. In reality, it's only 12 feet. You know, every successive floor got shorter and shorter. The lights even got smaller and smaller. So Thane had uh, an explosive that he had used that was this uh, very low temperature fireball. I think it burned at 100, 120 degrees, whereas the other stuff was 350 degrees. Because every time we'd set this fireball up that would come up to the camera, we were afraid of it just destroying the model. And so the first time he did it, it just cooked, I think, the bottom two feet of it. We repainted that and did it over again. So this stuff he used was uh, benzyl peroxide is what it, I don't know if you can use it anymore. You look at it cross-eyed and it catches on fire. So uh, Boss did a lot of really great sort of regular effects on that movie that, that looked great in the movie. Right down to um, the very end, you tilt down from the building, you see the blown up top of the building, and Bill Neal had shot this. He had hand tracked the, cam the, the live action camera that shot the real building. So Bill had tracked the top of the miniature. We actually shot the top of the miniature and composited, and it just locked it perfectly. And we, a lot of the guys were cutting miniature pieces of paper uh, out of um, Japanese tissue paper that I think Adam Gelbart had used for doing model, model uh, airplanes. Because if you cut this paper into something that's about this big, it it falls like a hard uh, sheet. It doesn't, it doesn't flow and flutter, whereas the tissue paper was very supple. And it, even at small pieces, it would fall like this. So we had to have miniature at the very top of the shot, miniature paper falling, because the paper's been blown out of the top of this building. Anyway, all that stuff, it, the shot came together, looked fantastic, and everybody was really happy. And unfortunately, I don't know why, but they went to ILM for the sequel. And I, I thought Boss would have done a better job, but I worked at Boss, so what can I say? I loved the projects we started with and then started in my later years, they're getting frustrated by sort of missing out on opportunities to work on shows that I really wanted to work on. One of them was The Abyss, which was briefly awarded to Boss before it went to ILM. One of them was Die Hard 2. Which we had done such a great job on the first Die Hard, I thought that you know, Richard really deserved that show and didn't get a chance to bid on it uh, for whatever reason. And I kind of like Die Hard 4, but up until then I thought we really did the best Die Hard. 